the Conference Board of Canada Conference, uh, which will be a happening uh, November 5th and 6th uh, here in Ottawa. And uh, thanks for being with me. Thank you. My pleasure. So, Mitchell, why don't we start with you giving us a little bit of your feedback, so who you are and what your organization does. Okay, so my name is Mitchell Ozak. I'm the president of Quanta Consulting Incorporated. Quanta is a strategy and execution consultancy based in Toronto. We do work across Canada and the United States, primarily with large Fortune 500 organizations as well as the public sector and we provide strategy consulting services um, lately a lot on gamification and social media and then we assist those very organizations implement many of the recommendations that we that we rep that we uh, put forth perfect gamification is really as a concept and in practice really taking off lately so that must be a fun field to be in it, it's the wild, wild west of, um, of business strategy because it really means a lot of things to a lot of people and its value cuts across, right across organizations as well as, you know, partner ecosystems. So we could be talking about one day about gamification in terms of improving employee engagement and the next day we could be writing about how it can improve customer loyalty or drive employee training. So. It's really a fascinating field because it has so many applications and uses up and down the organization. Great. So not every day is different when you go to work for you. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm also a, um, you know, a father of two young kids and so on and a busy wife, so I have all of that to deal with. But really the terrific thing about gamification is that it, it allows us to have a new conversation with business leaders and organizational leaders. And it's not something that I would consider faddish. It's generated some real compelling value for a lot of different organizations. And it's nice to talk about a new business trend and back it up with real value and customer and client success stories. That's great. So the conference's um, focus is around social media, but obviously you're going to tie it in with um, gamification. So how do you use social media in the context of what you do? A big part of um, a lot of gamification programs have a very significant social media component to it. Um, because as you, as you know, uh, many employees, many customers are engaged you know, through smartphones, through desktops, through a variety of different platforms like Facebook and Google Plus and so on. So social media is really a, a major enabler of gamification in many circumstances. And to, to design and, and implement a, a gamification program requires the organization to really look at where their clients spend a lot of their time, how do they interact with their peers in the organization, and essentially um, insist that we have to design and gamification into these various platforms so it becomes seamless in their day-to-day -day experience. Great. That's great. That sounds really interesting, actually. So you work with clients from all kinds of different industries, different backgrounds. I still have a hard time convincing clients that you know they should be implementing a social media strategy. So I can't even imagine how difficult it is to convince people to use gamification because I think some people still think gamification is about video games. So what kind of a challenge is that like? Um. Yeah, definitely we um, are in an evangelist role right now. There are a number of um, so-called experts across North America that talk about it. Um, it is very, very early stages, and we do a lot of education with our clients and our prospects around it. Um, the fact that it does rely on video game techniques and principles actually makes it easier for a lot of people to understand it because over 50% of adults in North America play some sort of video game, whether it's on their smartphone or their Xbox wow. or PlayStation. So the video game aspect actually helps them understand what's involved. The challenge is to tie the video game techniques with social and behavioral psychology, with technology, and then link all of that to real business goals and business outcomes. So it's more of a a holistic explanation as opposed to you know what's really the technology or what are the tools. Great. So if you could say uh, like one thing to someone that's 
considering gamification right now to help them uh, meet their goals, what would that be? What would be the one, like your one-liner, con convince them to, to consider it? Um, this is actually a very compelling line. It might be a few lines, but really what gamification is all about is triggering and sustaining long-term behavioral change. And it is extremely successful at doing that because it taps in fundamentals, human psychological and subconscious, subconscious drivers, and then links that to business goals. So ultimately, if you want consumers to buy more product from you, you want to change their behavior. If you want employees to be more productive and show up to work more, you're changing their behavior and their mindset. And really, gamification is about making change and sustaining it over the long term through a medium and a technology and a set of principles that people love to do. And mm -hmm. people have been playing games yeah. for over 10,000 years. So we're really not doing anything different. We're just leveraging anthropology and new technology and the proven precepts from the video game industry. Yeah, and it's all about habits, right? So you want people to exhibit some behavior and you give them a cue and then there's the routine that they have to get in, but the, the nice part of gamification is that reward in the end where they can, you know, they see either progress or there's a bit of competition, and so it ties in really well with that. Well, absolutely, because it really, really addresses their intrinsic psychological drivers. So their desire to want to relate to their peers, their desire for yeah. mastery, for status. These are the things that drive our behavior at a fundamental core level. And the uh, you know what I often find, which is very exciting for me, is you know when we go into organizations, we and we would talk about how to use gamification to improve employee engagement. And you know, typically a head of HR or a CEO will say, you know, our employees are very resistant to change. And then when we ask them, how many of your employees play online video games where they have to collaborate with their peers, and they have to and you know have to rely on teamwork and communication. We find most of them do all of those great things just outside of the office. They, they figure out very quickly, aha, there's something that we have to do internally to replicate that game-like online experience. And then it's just a question of where do we design in gamification principles in the organization and how do we design in the right program that on one hand you know, is fun and engaging and so on. And on the other hand, it doesn't make the company appear like Big Brother. Because there is right. always a little bit of cynicism and skepticism within employee groups. Yeah, I think, the, I think that's all around, right? With right. any new programs that, that, that HR tries to roll out, there's always some skepticism, unfortunately. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so realizing that gamification is quite new, uh, where do you see the future of gamification in general? And it looks like a lot of your, um, your applications are HR-related. Correct. So where would you see the future of gamification for that industry in particular, and then in general, just a more kind of holistic uh, opinion of where you think it's going? You know, that, that's a great question that I have a hard time answering, because you're, you're asking me to be a prophet, which is yeah. very <laughs> different. Um, but my senses, and from speaking with my peers and, and reading the research, is that the killer app right now, at least what I've seen in large organizations, mm -hmm. is improving employee engagement and employee productivity. Yeah. And that runs the gamut from um, reducing employee absences because of quote unquote sick days after the Super Bowl to improving productivity for mundane tasks um, to being uh, more collaborative and more innovative in their everyday practices. Some of the best case studies I've seen with, with returns you know, in, in the thousands of percent have been in that area. Surprisingly, clients are more interested in experimenting on their own employees than they are on their customers, which I would have thought two years ago, it would have been, you know, let's leave our employees alone and let's explore on how we can use gamification on our communities or customers. So I would think in the immediate term, immediate defined as within the next year, more initiatives and pilot programs around tweaking employee engagement. Because at the end of the day, that's sort of the final frontier for a lot of companies to mm -hmm. reduce costs and improve performance. 
On the customer side, I think it's going to happen, but a lot of those use cases and a lot of the technology is going to be proven internally first, and I think there's good reasons for that because there's less brand risk. You yeah. can work out the, the, the kinks of the technology and so on and so forth. So I think ultimately gamification will cross all aspects of the organization, but I think you know the thin edge right now is going to be internally, and you know some of the best case studies that we take our clients through and we'll take the conference board through will be on a lot of employee focused uh, transformation. Well that's great. Um, so just to tie back to social media a little bit, um, how do you see social media and gamification um, integrating even better to get the results that you're talking about? Um, I, I envision a world and you know I share this with a lot of other people, we envision a world where a company has a completely immersive social, uh, immersive gamification platform that not only cuts across their their enterprise systems, their own knowledge management systems, and so on and so forth, but it becomes embedded within Facebook, Twitter, even to a certain extent LinkedIn. So I, this is going to sound a little creepy, but so it's really part of the 724 fabric yeah. of, a, of, a, of an employee. Now, what we find with a lot of companies is employees, you know, work all the time, and they're, you know, they flip between their work email and their personal email, and so on and so forth. And a lot of their business is now on Facebook, and so on and so forth. Gamification, in the long run, will will likely overlay all of that. If if organizations like social media companies, companies, and individuals, one, give the permission for that to happen. And two, that they can create seamless experiences mm -hmm. across yeah. all those different platforms and vehicles. That is the biggest challenge, as well as yeah, the I think seamless system. integration is yeah. seamless experience is a big one. Right. Because um, if it feels like you're all over the place, I think that's when people start to not really follow through how how it all works together, right? Right. For game to really work, it needs to be immersive. And it needs to, and it's as much a journey for the consumer uh, and for the employee as it is anything else. So, you know, point solutions like a Twitter based gamification program will work, but a lot of employees and consumers will quickly lose interest because the other 90% of their time is based outside of that kind of world. So, the ultimate vision is that our lives are gamified to the better. Yeah. And people, when they opt in, decide to participate, and it has benefits for everybody. Yeah, it really does, and it's kind of it's you know it, it's funny because gamification, where it's at now, almost sounds like where social media was a couple of years ago, right? People would think, oh, I need to be on Twitter, and then they realize it's not really about Twitter or the platform itself. It's about what goals you're trying to achieve and making all of your efforts work together and leveraging them instead of just saying, well, I just need to be on Twitter or I just need to be on Facebook. It's really about the whole package, right? Part of the problem is are people like me that push concepts and words called gamification, which is you know, <laughs> very off-putting, it's misleading, and it's an obtuse term. And, and I didn't invent it. I just use it because my clients and prospects call me about it, but really isn't the best way to talk about these kinds of things. <laughs> That's um, true. But there are worse ways. So, you know, we would leave it <laughs> now. But the truth is, is that games are embedded in everything we do. You know, I come home and I play Monopoly with my kids, which is a game. I play hockey with my son on the street. That's a game. Gamification is really all about what we've always been doing on a regular basis. It just formalizes it, overlays a lot of cool technology, and integrates it in with social media and work processes. So, you know, I'm hoping someone's going to invent a better word. I, I haven't been able to. But really, at the end of the day, it, it's it's going to be second nature to us, like eating, sleeping, studying, reading, watching the TV, because we're doing it now anyway. It's just a question of how do we do it and when do we do it. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, so then my, my last question is actually my favorite question, and it's about what aha moment that you were working with a client um, and something happened when you were using your gamification um, uh, either software or the tools that you provided and you were like, wow, we weren't expecting that, but how awesome is it that this happened? Okay. Um, 
it wasn't a project that I worked we worked on specifically but it's one we studied extensively and we use it in every one of our presentations so our firm has done a lot of like as a bit of background our firm has done a lot of work in terms of improving call center productivity and call center uh, people who work in call centers tend to turn over a lot anywhere from 20 to 50 percent per year it's a very difficult job no you know what sorry I'm going to talk about a better, a better <laughs> example than that. Call centers are good, but I have an even better one. One of our clients, uh, we've had a client for two years now, and they perform software testing. And the, the role of testing software is tedious, mundane. No one ever wants to be a software tester. They want to be a <laughs> software developer. They want to be a software integrator. Um, and this client of ours has always had a challenge, and they're very large. They've had a challenge getting proper software testers, keeping them happy, and making them productive. Because at the end of the day, you know how good you test your software will determine how good your application is. It carries massive brand risks and security risks if it's for a bank, and so on and so forth. So very difficult task. Very hard to attract people to it. Very difficult to keep them. In other words, a great gamification application. So we worked with this client and we stalled and we basically gamified testing. And what we did was um, we created a leaderboard. We created an internal competition between all the testing groups to see who can find more bugs faster and, and while ensuring they were quality bugs. And at the same time, creating sort of a, an esprit de corps around testing in general. So it wasn't just um, a mundane activity, but it was something that they would get more engaged with and enjoy. Um, to say that it was successful was, was, an, was an understatement. They ended up finding, uh, for one particular application, which was a large one, 300% more bugs in two-thirds less time, so a third of the time. Wow. And people were much happier, and they couldn't wait both the ones who were participating as well as the other testers yeah. couldn't wait to enter the next contest. Oh, that's great. And, and what was amazing about that was the, the client didn't have to pay any more money. They saved money. The, their end user was much happier because they got better outcomes in quicker time. So here's an example where a relatively inexpensive, and, and I can tell you, very inexpensive, very inexpensive gamification program with technology, with optimized gamified workflows, and with sort of a cool contest that was designed for them, was able to be a truly win-win for everybody involved. And now we're rolling that out to a variety of other uh, internal groups, as well as other companies that are looking at this. So what's, what's fantastic there was it didn't require a huge amount of anything, just a little bit of common sense, um, uh, a, a true understanding of psychology, of, yeah. the, of you know, linking it to real business outcomes, and overlaying a proper technology on it. So the technology aspect of it was the last part of it. The other things were much more important. And it's, it's now a poster child for a lot of our, you know, a lot of our pitches. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, those are great results, and that's the that, that's a perfect test case, and then you right. can demonstrate ROI. And right. I think saving time and saving money is two things that any client would love to be able to accomplish. But and the third thing is, which is very important, I want to stress this: it was fun. You know, yeah, well, employee satisfaction and people being happy it has a huge impact on your bottom line, and 100%. people don't miss work as much, they're happier, there's less conflict, they work better together, so lots of upsides. There. Yeah, and this was for, and what I loved about this particular application or client, this group are, were generally demoralized, they leave all the time, you know, many of them are new Canadians, it's their first IT job. You, you were basically taking, you know, to a certain extent, the bottom of the IT barrel, and people who can't wait to get out of a job, and you gave them a reason to come to the office, be happy, and perform much faster and much better than they normally would. So, you know, what we try and emphasize very much is sometimes fun is a goal in and of itself, and exactly to your point, um, the spin-off benefits for that um, will be tremendous. And we have yet to see those, but um, 
we, we certainly expect that the turnover for this company will go down, job satisfaction will go up, they will become better evangelists in terms of recruiting to the company for clients and other testers. So, yeah. you know, the secondary benefits will be massive and, and I'm sure outweigh the primary value that was gen generated. Yeah, it's funny, as, as those, as gamification in that sense gets kind of, uh, becomes part of the fabric of everything else that we do, like Facebook and Twitter and all of that, it'll be interesting to see how it meshes in with the quantified self, which is a whole other thing in and of itself, but, you know, when we talk about satisfaction and happiness and all of that, it'll be on its own eventually, I think, or, or our kids will. Well, that's the great thing about... Um when it's tied in with a really strong um, technology platform and social media because really those are engines about collecting data and metrics and numbers. So exactly to your point, the, the, the people who are engaged, the customers and the employees don't realize that they're giving companies a wealth of information about how to you know, revamp their workflows, how to structure incentives and it's not onerous and it's not creepy and it's not weird. They're just providing us with the roadmap for generating all of that. Yeah, well, it's funny because there are weird people like me who are grateful for people like Google who actually serve me what they know I want right. to see as opposed to what someone in China or anywhere else in the world wants right. to see. So, right. um, but I, I know <laughs> I know there there are more and more people like me, but there are people who believe the opposite and who would rather be as you know anonymous as possible. Right, but you know a lot of those people in a game environment will choose to give up so much of their data and their work process and willingly do it. And yeah. So some of the people who've, who've signed on to play additional games around the same software testing were some of the most uh, skeptical employees in the first place and afraid of Big Brother and afraid of you know, somebody watching their very behavior and here they are you know, volunteering to participate. So that kind of win is, is, is huge for the company and it, and it just you know, underscores the fact that you know, these games are no different than what a lot of people already do all the time. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Um, well, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give us a little bit of a sneak peek into what you'll be talking about. I mean, we've heard a lot about gamification, but maybe more specifically uh, in your presentation during the conference. Well, I have two presentations I typically give. Um, one will be the introductory to gamification. So, you know, not knowing my audience and not knowing how much how much they know. What we'll delve into is basically an explanation of what gamification is. And that's important because as I said a little bit earlier, it involves elements of a bunch of different disparate technologies and disciplines. So we really have to explore that a little bit. We're going to talk a lot about successful use cases. So where we've seen it, gamification successfully deployed where it delivers a, a massive return on investment and higher satisfaction and so on and so forth. We'll go into about three or four of those. They, were, they will be skewed more towards a public sector employee yeah. transformation kind of, kind of context. We're not going to talk a lot about you know, improving product sales or anything like that because that's really not the mandate right. of the government. And then the last little bit of the presentation will focus on best practice design and implementation. So where do we go from here? If somebody actually wanted to do it, how do they choose a program? How do they get, you know, dip their toe in and, and, and how to avoid some of the major pitfalls that I mentioned earlier around privacy and systems integration and so on and so forth. So it'll really be an end-to-end -end, um, discussion about, and hopefully it's a discussion as opposed to a lecture, but what we're going to do in gamification, who's done it successfully, and how to get going with it. Great. Well, that sounds really interesting. Thanks so much for your time this morning, Mitchell, and uh, I look forward to your presentation. Great. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.